Hello and welcome to Deal Flow, the show that looks at mergers and acquisitions and all things corporate finance. I'm Erica van der Nokia's three-decade stint as one of the mobile industry's biggest players is over after the Finnish company agreed to sell its handset business to Microsoft. Coming up on the show, we look at the merits of the $7.2 billion Microsoft Nokia transaction. We start off with the other deals that have been making news this past week. Citigroup has announced the sale of its $4.3 billion private equity fund, City Venture Capital International. The buyer is Roatan Group. Roatan will have over $7 billion in assets under management after the deal, which is expected to close in the fourth quarter of this year. Barclays will sell its retail bank in the United Arab Emirates. Analysts say the move highlights the challenges facing foreign banks in the Gulf. Cash-rich local rivals are far better positioned to meet stricter rules on banking risk. Last week, Verizon Communications agreed to pay $130 billion to buy Vodafone Group out of its US wireless business, signing history's third largest corporate deal announcement and bringing to an end an often tense 14-year marriage. The Nokia deal is the second biggest acquisition Microsoft has ever done after its $8.6 billion purchase in 2011 of internet communication service Skype. In studio with me, Nick Norman-Smith from Lentis Asset Management. Welcome, Nick. Good to have you here. And I'm going to get into the detail of that. We have a little something first, but just tell me, yes or no, do you think this was a good deal that Microsoft has done? Look, I think for the amount that they paid versus the, the balance sheet that they have, it was probably worth uh, worth a bit of a punt, to be honest. Um, and Microsoft has got a market cap of $260 billion, of which around $60 billion is net cash. So $7 billion isn't huge to try and think of it as a, as a bit of a, a venture capital sort of investment into trying to, to push out their, yes. their ecosystem. But I, I, I don't think it's going to be a smashing success. But, f you know, $7 billion for Nokia and all of those patents, it, it's not a bad deal. We'll get into far more detail. But first, we get the, the views of our in-house tech experts on the deal. Hello, my name is Zaki Anastasiu. Welcome to our Deal Flow viewers. So soon, Nokia, the biggest brand in mobile phones, might be no more. Well, kind of. Nokia's accepted a $7.2 billion deal from Microsoft for their mobile phone business and a couple of patents. I mean, this is by far the biggest news we've seen all year and not unexpected. No, not, not unexpected, but for most people it was. I mean, we were at the Nokia launch the other day and uh, the people that worked at Nokia only found out about it when we did. So it was really quite a best kept secret. But I guess, Toby, it was something that was inevitable. I mean, when you look at where the landscape is at the moment, I use that it was a seismic shift that took place. You look at how Google's positioned themselves with the Android operation system you look at Apple and now you know it's kind of solidified this Microsoft buying Nokia you've got three big players who are gonna fight this out you know well two big players and a, yeah. a little one I mean it's such a great irony that the underdog in this sense is Microsoft yes although you know reading some of the uh, in-betweens and some of the research it's suggesting that in the next two years they could get to that number two slot pretty easily so I mean who knows in this are you, industry? Are you alleging there's wishful thinking going on in Redmond <laughs> I don't know I don't know <laughs> but but certainly I mean they said the same about their tablets yeah yeah. Look, in terms of in terms of finally having a mobile strategy, well, that's one way to get it. You know, yes. Stephen Elop's done a really good job with with Nokia. They've got they've got pillared, and he has been pillared for you know someone said eighty five percent of the stock value has gone down. Be that as it may, the problems existed when he arrived. He was just honest enough to call exactly call a spade a spade. It looks as though they can go on forever on this, but Nick, I want your opinion on this. Now, Aki made an interesting point about the size. You've got a third player and. And, and they're pretty small. Uh, Microsoft has 3% of the mobile market. Compare that with 79% from uh, that Android has. Correct, and then, then Apple makes up uh, the balance, basically. So, that, and that's the thing, and, and this is strategically what's going to be very difficult to Microsoft. Um, and we've seen their dominance in the, in the desktop uh, window space. Um, it is all about having the ecosystem and the scale in this mobile space, because obviously people have got the apps. Um, app developers are only going to develop um, for an ecosystem that makes it wow, you know, am I going to spend money developing an Android app where I touch 80% yes. or a Microsoft app where I, where I take 30% and that's, that's why Microsoft needs to get, um, you know, to get some critical mass. So what they're saying is, well, 
we haven't been able to get too many handset makers out there to really adopt it. So what we're actually going to do is w what, we, what they did with Surface last year and say, we're going to manufacture this essentially ourselves by buying uh, Nokia mm. and push that out there. And hopefully we can, we can grow our ecosystem that way because it, it's not going to be sustainable if that mo mobile handset system, you know, ecosystem stays at 3%. Yes. It's, um, you know, it's a big issue. Some commentators, well, many have been very critical of the deal. And as you pointed out, the share price plummeted shortly after the announcement. Now, one of the criticisms was that Microsoft had already had this partnership with Nokia since 2011. So why did they need to blow all this money to, to cement it? Because it doesn't really alter the position. But do you think that would just give them that much more control to, to push out the use of its software to increase that 3% to... Much more. Yeah, I, th I think so. But I mean, that's a good point. Why, why spend the money when Nokia has already tied themselves to your to your handset um, ecosystem anyway? So I mean, I think that is a valid point. Uh, the other side of it is, well, quite frankly, I know seven point two billion dollars sounds like a lot. Uh, you know, in the world of Microsoft, it, it's really not that much. They're getting the patents and and they are solidifying it, and we'll have we'll have complete control and and perhaps get a bit more of that. Um, design know-how in, into the rest of their business. You mm. know, I think what's interesting is the day of the announcement, um, so it's a $7 billion deal, the stock market wiped off about $14 billion of valuation, which looks pretty illogical. But the reason why is people are saying, how much more money are they going to throw at this? Because remember, Microsoft's core business is developing software. Now, software is one of the best businesses you can be in if you're a large scale, because you, you spend X to develop the product. And then your marginal cost to sell it to everyone else is zero. It, you know, it's the cost of a download or a CD. So if you can develop something and sell it to a large audience like Microsoft does, you're making a significantly large amount of money. Hardware, on the other hand, it's much lower margin. You've got to pay for the cost of every handset. It's hugely competitive, as we've seen all the players out there. Apple has been under pressure because um, they make quite strong margins on, on some of the hardware because of the ecosystem it's bundled with. But even them, their margins are coming down. Samsung's margins aren't particularly attractive. So getting into a commoditized hardware business mm -hmm. uh, is concerning. Microsoft will argue, yes, but strategically it's, it's almost a lost leader. Yes to push our software out. So you're touching on two points there, two elements of the criticism of this deal. One is that Microsoft is known for overpaying for, for assets, and the other that they're possibly moving in the wrong direction. The, the idea is that they should really be developing their business software avenue, and here they are going in almost the opposite direction, we are spending money on the consumer mobile market. But it goes back to a point you, you made j just a few paragraphs back, um, saying that it's, it's so important to have the success in the mobile market, because that ultimately leads to success, paves the way to success in PC and, and tablets. Exactly. So uh, the, they're probably, you know, they're not looking to really make so much money on the devices, but it's saying, look, if we can get, if we can get this out there. What's interesting, if we take a step back and look at Microsoft, it's a, essentially it's a business-to-business -business company. It sells, 50% uh, of its revenue comes from its office suite and, and the various um, elements. Another 25% is its server and tool software. And only 25% is what we know of Microsoft as the Windows on the PC. So 75% of this business, and of all of that office business, most of it's sold to, to, um, to corporates anyway. So getting into that, getting into consumer space, uh, you know, is, mm -hmm. well, it's not really where their money lies, but, but they see an opportunity. Cynics may say it's a bit of, you know, it's a bit of Apple envy and, and they're trying to, trying to get into to their turf when actually the real money to be made is, is on the business side where, where Apple has struggled a lot more. But, I think it's worth it. Everyone's getting there. They've, they've developed um, you know, uh, mobile-based uh, versions of, of their office products as well. So mm -hmm. I think they're saying we can't not be in, in the mobile yes. space. So look, it's, it's $7 billion. And interesting as well, that most of that money is sitting offshore. If they bring that money back into the States, they pay a hefty sum of tax according yes. to US tax law. So it's almost, it's not free money, but it's, uh, they're spending it pre-tax instead of post-tax. So, so, so it's actually seven billion of which, you know, yes. it would be maybe f three or four if they were, yeah, if they right. were spending it back in, in the US. So, so it's different ways of looking at capital allocation. So top down, perhaps is not great capital allocation, but if you consider the after tax uh, amounts, it's a different story. Yeah, okay. Now you, you mentioned earlier how the Microsoft share price dropped on the announcement of this deal. At the same time, the BlackBerry, uh, well, it's better, well, BlackBerry share price lifted. So is there expectation of, of further corporate action, perhaps from Microsoft or from elsewhere, or consolidation in the market? Yeah, you know, I'd be, I don't know if they, it would be from Microsoft, but, but yeah, you know, it's quite interesting. Obviously, Nokia, and, and it was Research in Motion, but it is now BlackBerry, and they changed their name, is um, 
they've been struggling for a couple of years now. And everyone was sitting waiting for the buyouts, waiting for the buyouts. And I think everyone had written off and said, look, these actually are too long gone now. Um, anyone who was going to buy them would have bought them by now. And obviously now with Microsoft coming in, the, you know, people are getting excited again. I'm sure every investment banker worth his salt is going to be out and about trying to, trying to find a buyer. Okay, I, I, do yeah. think, I do think Nokia is, is a more attractive asset than BlackBerry. BlackBerry's obviously got a, a great technology platform. But I think they've almost lost the uh, lost the opportunity to right. to to sell it off. Nokia, it's under a lot of pressure, but its phones have got you know its recent phones have got some good reviews. Uh, it still designs decent products, and and there are quite a number of patents that that come with it. Yes, and then what about leadership? Because at the time of the announcement, the Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer also announced he'd be stepping down within a year. Yeah, this is interesting. So, uh, Atlantis, we you know we are shareholders of Microsoft. We think it's very attractively valued overall. So we've had a bit of a rocky ride because um, the previous week was the bomb announcement. Um, he's been pretty poor. So this is the benefit of of buying a great company with with bad leadership. The stock rallied about eight percent on Bomber's resignation, and then a few days later they announced this deal, and it's come all the way back down again. Um, because you know, again, people are concerned how you know how how, how you're actually spending the money because th it's churning out uh, significant amounts of cash. So yes, um, w what interestingly enough comes with with the deal is, is Stephen Elop, who who was a Microsoft uh, head of Microsoft's business division, then went to Nokia. Uh, you know, people are calling him as potentially the next Nokia CEO. I don't know. I mean, the next Microsoft, Microsoft CEO. Yeah. I don't know if that's the best thing or not. If you look at what's happened to Nokia, you could argue that he inherited the, a poison chalice anyway. So I, I think it will be important for for Nokia to get uh, to get a good leader, mm. to get someone in. Uh, you know, but people are harsh on Ballmer. But uh, and, and I think the the tech guys were chatting earlier, saying, you know, that the stock's lost eighty odd percent to what it is of, of its valuation over time. But also remember. The market was valuing Microsoft at way too high a multiple, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there was no way Superman was going to, you know, was going to get this company to deliver on the promises the yes. market expect. Yeah. Much like we're seeing with a lot of the local retailers in South Africa at the moment, yes. and, and various other companies, they're wonderful businesses. Microsoft has been a wonderful business over the last ten years, but because people paid too much. They've seen a lot of uh, degradation in the share price. Now yes. it's at a much more attractive position. So, whoever the next CEO of Microsoft is. Even if they do a reasonable job, for the multiples that you're paying now, they'll probably be hailed as a hero because investors would have done really, right. really well in the following 10 years. Nick, thank you so much for your insights. That was Nick Norman Smith from Lentis Asset Management. And that's a wrap of this edition of DealFlow. Do tune in next week to get the latest news and views on mergers and acquisitions in South Africa and Africa. Until then, from me, Erika van der Madwe, it's goodbye.